Whoo, there it is. And now time to remove the paint. I started with a chemical stripper and allowed it to sit on the paint for about 10 minutes. Using a paint scraper, a rag, and a bottle of acetone, I came back and removed any of the loose paint. I think overall it worked pretty well. You'll notice that I'm not wearing a organic vapor mask at this point. I did get smarter with that as I went on. This was just me learning how to use a new chemical in the shop. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how that works, so I'm going to continue using it.
In this room, at least when it comes to fumes, I have a power vent fan, so even though I wasn't wearing a mask at this point, at least I was breathing fresh air. I really struggled getting this piece clean. Using a rag, scotch bright, and wire brush, I didn't have too much luck cleaning it. Eventually, I used the sandblaster to get into the nooks and crannies, and a wire wheel for the larger surfaces. This was still quite time consuming, but at least it worked quite well. Thankfully, it wasn't winter yet, and the weather was quite nice, so this wasn't all that bad even though it was pretty messy. Eventually I got out the electric pressure washer and turned on the outside hot water spigot. This seemed to work the best. When adding a little acetone to the mix, it really helped remove all of the pulley dust and grime that had accumulated on the inside cover. Acetone is one of the main ingredients in brake clean, if you're wondering, and it proved to be a very, very valuable solvent for cleaning up this machine. I went through a lot of gloves on this project. Chemicals, especially strippers and solvents, are particularly harsh. I used Venom Steel gloves. They are two-layer nitrile heavy-duty gloves. They seem to work quite well. You're probably wondering why I did that. Well, this panel fits on and then there was a makeshift panel that was hammered out and put over the top. It looks like garbage. Now this is beneath the plane. So once the panel goes on here, that adds like three eighths of an inch. That means I have almost a quarter inch of clearance now between this and whatever cover I put on there. Huh. Rotated it. 180 degrees. At this point, I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to paint the inside of the motor cabinet. I would have gone through half a gallon of acetone and I don't know how many paper towels trying to clean it. Eventually, I decided to simply cover up the motor with a plastic bag, get out the pressure washer, the spray bottle of acetone, and just chip away at it until any of the water running away from it wasn't black. This took quite a while, and I'm glad that the hot water at this point was being heated off of the outdoor wood burner. At least that part was environmentally friendly.
I was thinking how to get in here, and I figured it out. A grill brush for charcoal grills. So, just get that going. Yeah, perfect. Not cool. That's broken. I make a new one of these. Just a little bit of sludge in the bottom. Pump is in good shape. That's the felt filter. Feels pretty good. I noticed on this, there is a lot of play. And uh, I found an Allen key back here. And I wanna see what it does if I tighten it down. Seems to have gotten rid of a lot of the play. I think we'll call that good for now. You'll notice I finally wised up and I'm wearing an organic vapor mask. As I begin work on the apron, I started taking off all the loose paint, started with some stripper and acetone, 
And then while I waited for that to go to work, I started to take off some of the smaller pieces. All right, I just spent the last two hours putting all these parts through the ultrasonic cleaner and then scrubbing and uh, drying. Since it's much easier to paint small parts when they are not attached to a larger machine, I carefully removed these shifting levers. There's another knob on the selector for the gearbox on the side. That pin was hard to remove. I ended up putting a board underneath to support the knob so I could pound the pin out because I didn't like pounding on an unsupported um, 80 year old cast iron arm. When removing the paint on the belt cover, I thought it was kind of interesting to see the different layers. It seems like a lot of the metal on this machine has a red layer, some kind of a primer or sealer that was attached to the cast iron or metal. That stuff is incredibly hard to remove by chemical means. On top of that, there's a black filler material, which can be made soft with acetone. Then there's a green layer, which I believe was the original color of the lathe. And then on top of that, somebody painted over it with a light gray, which is the flakiest of all the paints. I love these big levers. They are so cool to look at. They are way more complicated than they need to be when it comes to a casting. And there are these lovely retained pins that clink as you move them from one place to the next. I think they're just so cool. They're not very practical, but they are just so cool. I'm using a one to nine solution of simple green in the ultrasonic cleaner. It works well for most general purpose cleaning. In the small container, I'm filling it with acetone. I don't wanna fill the ultrasonic cleaner with acetone because there are some heating elements that run along the sides. If for some reason the water level or the liquid level in that ultrasonic cleaner dropped below those heating elements, there's a potential to start a fire and explosion and whatever else depending on what solvent is in there so if the solvent is self-contained within a container that is then within the water bath in the ultrasonic cleaner it is far safer and that is the preferred way to enhance the cleaning power with a solvent
these small parts are mostly clean. I'm just polishing them up with a little Scotch-Brite and cleaning off any last bits of grease or debris using some mineral spirits. The brush on stripper was working just fine, but I noticed they also had a spray on aerosol version, so I thought I'd try that one. It's a little stickier and seems to adhere to smaller parts a bit better than brushing it on. I also noticed when reading the SDS that it has quite a bit of acetone in it. This is basically the brush on stripper but with acetone as the carrier solvent. So that got me thinking, could I add acetone to the brush on version and then make my own spray on stripper? Well, everything is taken off that I want to take off. All the small parts have been cleaned up. And uh, ready for paint on some of this stuff. Not ready for paint, not yet, on the lathe. On one of these levers, you can see there was some damage, probably in transport or something. I mean, it is a 5,000 pound machine. This was brazed, so I would consider that a professional repair. With everything that I've taken apart, I'm missing one of these. But to be fair, it wasn't there when I started taking it apart. This one has acetone as one of the main ingredients, which is no doubt why it can be sprayed. This has some other solvents. Now, I believe, because acetone will evaporate very quickly, I can make my own spray. We're going to try that today. And my guess is to start with 150 ml of paint stripper. And let's add a little acetone to see and stir. Well, I think I call that half a, half a victory. I mean, it's not as even as this stuff, which is... Which is nice and even, but it does spray. Adding acetone to paint stripper did two things. It seemed to stay on the surface a bit longer and it really stripped things very well. The 
Paint stripper doesn't really touch this stuff, the body filler, this kind of gray black stuff, but the acetone makes this sticky. So the acetone will kind of solve this. Putting the two together takes everything down to the primer, which is this red stuff. And that's fine. Like the extra thick spots of the body filler wipe off. This will dry and I can sand that and it should be nice and smooth. There are some wipers. These are rubber. These are felt. This is felt. I'm not sure. So these have contracted. So these parts at the tips used to touch the ways or the bed. They have since kind of receded. They're no longer doing their job. I think I might replace those with felt. I have rubber, but cutting it to fit, I think would be just kind of a challenge. The oil plugs for the lathe don't quite fit the 7 16 square drive. So I have an idea. Point four one five, yeah, point four one four. Just knocked off the corners just a touch, and now it works perfectly.
it's kind of concealed from view right here, but there's actually a cavity that I'm reaching into and pulling metal shavings out of. I don't know how metal shavings got into that cavity, but I suppose 83 years is quite a bit of time for metal shavings to get anywhere in any quantity and build up over time. You can also see my paint stripper and acetone mixture doing a great job of eating through the paint and even making that filler soft and remoldable. With the gearbox cover off and on the table, you can really see how Stripper Formula 2.0 works. It did a great job and I was able to get the cover very clean. It should take paint very well now. And uh, yeah, overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how that went. A quick tip, a lot of old machine screws are slotted. And the best slotted screwdriver tips that you can find often come in gunsmithing screwdriver kits, which frankly are very affordable and they do a great job of not marring or damaging the slots in these screws. These covers had some sort of paper seal on them and there's no saving that. So I'm gonna to have to come up with a solution for making a new seal later on. Paint stripping for these parts was the same as it's been and it went pretty smooth. Although after a while, I got kind of tired of it. So I decided to drop these parts in the ultrasonic cleaner and let it go for a little while to soften it up even more. And there we go. All of the parts are clean. No more small parts. Just big parts. And now back to the carriage for more stripping. As the stripping went on, I moved on to the headstock, and it went okay. Um, stripping is kind of turning into an anything goes kind of activity. So if the stripper works, the acetone, rigs, wire brushes, any kind of spinny bits on a die grinder, wire wheels, whatever it takes, I'm kind of using it to make it go faster. I just want to power through this as quickly as possible and get that surface prepped. And in doing that, I realized that the three-jaw chuck really needs to come off. I figured, no big deal. It probably doesn't weigh as much as the four-jaw. That thing was 207 pounds. Boy, was I wrong. I think the three-jaw, I haven't weighed it, but I think it actually weighs more than the four-jaw. This is a leveling foot, and I can spin it by hand. Look how not concentric that is. Before I start, I'm just gonna say, this is not a good idea, but it's the least bad idea that I have. Ugh. Oh, 
whole tip is bent. Crap, I gotta nib that whole thing off. Ugh. All right, now it's the second least bad idea. Now we're on to the third least to worst idea. The four leveling feet holes on the motor side, I was able to use a torque wrench to pull them out. So in the process, I kind of galled the threads a little bit. Again, because these were not perfectly straight. This is the straightest bolt that I have. I cut some slots on the tip. That is so it cleans out the threads. Running it through now with a little WD-40. And that cleaned it up real nice. So now we're all clean. Perfect. With the leveling feet side quest out of the way, it's back to stripping. Now, I've been getting better at it. I certainly don't enjoy it very much. It's one of those experiences which is very satisfying, but it's not very enjoyable. So let's speed that up and uh, keep going. A trick I picked up along the way was to use the vacuum for paint stripping. In this way, I would use my solvents to make the paint into a gel, and instead of burning through endless rolls of paper towels, I would use the shop vac to suck up that paint chemical slurry. It worked really well, it spread things up and kept things fairly clean, the only downside is eventually the vacuum hose got really heavy. I never actually clogged it, but all those ribs got filled with paint slurry. At the end of this project, that vacuum hose was pretty much shot. So I'm not sure if I really saved any money in paper towels, but it made it go a little bit quicker and it didn't suck quite as much. Oh yay, more metal filings. Uh, yeah, I uh, ended up pulling out a whole bunch of metal filings from underneath the headstock. I had no idea there was even a space there. But, as I've already discovered, any space that I don't know about is automatically filled with metal shavings. It might not be enjoyable, but boy was this satisfying. 
I really enjoyed getting these two shafts all cleaned up and getting that paint stripped. And surprisingly, it went really smooth. So I was so happy to get this part done and actually do it in the amount of time I figured it would be done. But that kind of luck doesn't keep going. Eventually, it caught up with me and I found myself taking off the change gearbox. The quick change gearbox is held on with four bolts, two accessible from the front and two from behind. To get the two from behind, a ratcheting wrench is definitely the tool of choice. I'm also very happy that I took off the change gearbox. There was a lot of stuff to get clean behind it and it made everything so much more accessible when it comes to painting later. And perhaps it should be no surprise that this change gearbox was full of gunk and metal shavings and all sorts of nastiness. And uh, unfortunately winter was starting to catch up to us now, but I still have hot water, still have a pressure washer, and I still have a bottle full of acetone. So I was able to head outside, get everything squeaky clean, bring it back into the warm shop, and get it all dried off. Oh, and this is also another part which weighs more than me. Probably closer to 220 to 230 pounds, I really struggled lifting this off the ground. I took off some more parts. And if you're wondering how much I can lift, this is about my max, I think, at this point. I'm not sure if this part is original, but it fits nice, and I'm going to tune it up. I started by removing the worn-out rubber. Then with some mineral spirits, scotch Bright, and paper towel, I shined up the metal and got it as clean as is reasonably able to do. I don't see a need to bring this to a high polish. I had some rubber that was a bit thicker than what was on there, and I cut that to size. Scrubbed it with Scotch Bright Mineral Spirits to clean it up, then drilled and put in some pop rivets to secure it to the metal shroud. The fit and finish is quite good, and I'm very happy with how it fits back on the lathe. And then, to nobody's surprise, back to more stripping. I'm kind of in the home stretch now. I'm making good progress and finishing up the bed. However, I did notice these carriage clamps need to come off and I figured, well, you know, as long as I'm cleaning up small parts, maybe I should also clean up the lock nuts on the leveling feet. This next part is kind of boring, so here are some facts and stats about the Monarch Model W 16-inch helical geared 16-speed Timkinized lathe. This lathe has a 30-inch long bed and an 18 and a half inch swing. The listed weight without motor is 4,650 pounds. The hole through spindle is 1 and 9 16 inches. The center Morse taper is a number 4. The range of threads per inch in the quick change gearbox is 1 and a half to 92. The range of feeds per inch in the quick change is 27 ten thousandths to 17 hundredths. The recommended motor size is 5 to 10 horsepower. Mine is 5 horsepower. Now here is an exciting excerpt from the brochure. Helical headstock gears. 14 gears on the 16 speed head. High carbon alloy steel. Heat treated and hardened. Silent. Smooth transmission of power. No gear tooth marks on work. Spindle speed changes made by double jawed clutches sliding on splined shafts by means of levers on front of headstock. 
impossible to engage conflicting gear ratios and no interference devices necessary. Extreme simplicity, rigid construction, nothing to get out of order. Spindle and headstock shaft bearings are Timken, giving greater rigidity, greater precision, greater production without chatter, longer life, and greater power economy. Oiling by splash system. A cascade of oil floods every working part in headstock. Filtered oil supplied to Timken spindle bearings. Multiple disc driving clutch with brake operated both from headstock and apron. Headstock oil tight. No gears, oil tubes, or other mechanisms in top cover plate. Apron is complete box section. All bearings are anti-friction, automatically oiled. Quick change gearbox has all shafts mounted in Timken bearings, oiled from central reservoir. Multiple integral keys are used. Ball thrust bearings on tailstock and crossfeed screws. Equipped with automatic force feed lubrication to carriage, bedways, compound rest, and apron. Well, here I am again. I was prepping for paint and came out with a plan. And uh, expecting to get so much done. I did not get done as much as I planned to but I ended up doing more than I planned. That's, uh, that's restorations. Anyway, this little trick I got going on right now is this sight glass has a leaky seal. They all do, and I want to replace the seals. However, I can't get this one out. The other two popped out like, like they were well-oiled. This one does not want to come out. I've been going back and forth, trying to figure out ways to get it out, um, one thought was to drill and tap these holes and use a screw to push it out. That makes me nervous. Um, if I break a tap, I'm, well, I'm really screwed then. So what I've come up with is I found some pins that are the exact size of these holes. No surprise, they are drill bits. Luckily, I have enough of the same size. Um, two of them line up perfectly, the other one does not. That seems to be okay for this purpose. And that is allowing me to oh, kind of work it out. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh, that was a beast. So there you go. It worked. So you can see this is the gasket material. We're gonna get that cleaned out and put some fresh stuff in. You know, it almost looks like that has been removed before. So maybe they went through and rebuilt this carriage. All I know is it's in great shape right now, so we're gonna leave it. Believe it or not, the last 50 minutes of video captures a hundred hours of work. The lathe is now completely oil and grease free. The surface is nearly ready for paint and all of the parts have been taken off that are going to be taken off for this restoration. This was a long video. Thanks for watching and check back for part two, painting. Till next time.